you got to reverse engineer the communication process. Who do you want to get a hold of? Who is in their team? Most people that try to get a hold of me try to reach out to me directly and don't realize that it may not necessarily be that I don't want to reach out to everybody, but I'm running multiple businesses on a daily basis. And the people that really influence me the most are the people that are in my team. A lot of people from my team are here. A lot of people from our mastermind are here. Michelle's here. Carlos is here. Daniel is here. <laughs> Natalia is here. So many people are here. And one thing you got to realize and touches back on what Brett was talking about is who do you want to work with? Why do you want to work with them? What can you do for them? Who's around them? Find those people. Show them what you got. Eventually, you're going to bring them up to you. A lot of the times that I end up working with people for my business or doing collaborations for Hustle Inspire Hustle or any of our other brands is because somebody's on my team has showed me, look at this shit. This shit's so cool. I think you need to be on top of this. I think you need to check it out. And then we end up exploring options. So you guys definitely want to be talking to uh, the right people. And that's why we're here. So I want to introduce you guys to my brand, Hustle Inspire Hustle. Hustle Inspire Hustle is a business development and entrepreneurship growth community that pretty much brings people together like this. There's a, it's, very, it's a very lonely journey to be an entrepreneur. C can you guys agree with that? Yeah. Trying to figure shit out by yourself, trying to see if you're doing the right thing. A lot of the time, the people that you're surrounding yourself with don't get your vision, they think you're crazy. They, why are you going to LA for this event? Why are you spending all this money? They don't understand where our mind is or how far we know we could go, right? So when you surround yourself with people like this, nobody in here, they, I can tell you guys tomorrow that I'm gonna build the next Facebook and people are not gonna think that I'm crazy because we can, the right people are in the room, the right connections are in the room. If we all stop talking right now and literally put this table, all these tables in a big giant square and said, all right, let's put all these minds in a room and we're gonna create a company together in the next five hours. We will have a successful business just because of the knowledge that's in the room and everything is about knowledge. This is why we get together and why we create our brand. So I wanna give you guys a little bit of background information on who I am and what I've done. So you see why I'm, why I'm qualified to speak to you guys. My name is Alex Quinn built and scaled over 15 brands in the last seven years. I have experience in digital marketing. That's pretty much what I do. I do digital marketing and strategic partnerships. I use my connections, people that I know to build, to build businesses, to connect dots. You know her, she knows her. How can all of this connection help us build a business? You guys are the perfect example of using connections to be able to, to really scale your business. How long, when was the first time that you guys spoke on a stage? May. May? And what was the first event that you guys went to? Social X? Yeah. Right? And when was that? April. So you guys went to your first event in April. And then a month later, you guys were speaking on stages with world-renowned entrepreneurs. Now tell me, till that day, were you guys running a huge business? No? How long had you guys been operating? The Glitter Twins? Yeah. Two years. Two years. Two years, right? Would you have, if somebody would have told you a year ago, you're going to be speaking on stage with Dan, with John, with Alex, with all these people, would you have believed it? Would you have thought? It's crazy to think how things could change in two, three months. And I want, I want you guys to give them a big round of applause, okay? Because one of the reasons I love seeing them and Ali at all, like for, for example, Ali, Ali goes to every single possible event that he could go to and he asks all the questions. He's not afraid to ask questions. That's, that's a truly smart person. People that are not afraid to ask questions, people that are not afraid to look stupid, because all you gotta do in life is continue to learn. Nobody knows everything, even I don't know everything. I'm sure there's a lot of things you guys have to teach me, and that's the reason why I'm here. Another reason why I like to learn is because I know I'm gonna be able to expand. One of the biggest things that I've done is start a podcast. My podcast, Hustle Inspires Hustle, has world-renowned entrepreneurs, and it's people that I genuinely wanna work with or look up to, and I would've wanna ask them questions, that I wouldn't, wouldn't have been able to ask them certain questions in a certain environment, maybe because they didn't have the time, maybe because the things wouldn't align right, and what better way to do it than having a podcast. Another thing that you guys should know about me is that I'm a member of the Forbes Agency Council of uh, PR experts and advertising executives, something you guys should definitely look into if you're in the space. It really helps you bring your brand authority up, and authority hijacking Forbes is very, very good, right? I'm a strategic marketing specialist. I work with many brands around the world from Tile to K-Swiss to McLaren to VaynerMedia, and I've done it all using my personal brand. So how I initially started is I started an advertising agency and the projects that my advertising agency was working on started becoming really popular. I was working with Red Bull, Nike, Adidas, all these brands, and I was behind the scenes. I was the person that was afraid of being on camera, didn't wanna inter be interviewed, didn't wanna be all over the place, but then I started to realize if I'm really gonna do something that I love, I really gotta embrace it. No matter how shy I am, no matter how nervous I am to get on stage, no matter how weird I feel before, I gotta go and I gotta embrace it. Who gives a shit how I feel at the moment? Because that's just your mind playing tricks on you, letting you trying to tell you that you can't do something, right? So moving on. If you guys haven't checked it out, make sure you guys check it out, write it down, the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast. We have some really, really cool guests like Jason Stone, the Millionaire Mentor, Neil Patel, 
Andy Frazella, Cole from Iconic, many, many people that you guys have probably heard about before and other people that we're gonna be releasing soon. We're streaming on all, pod, on, on all platforms right now, okay? So everything we do is about spreading a positive message and mentoring those around us. So like I mentioned before, the entrepreneurship game is very difficult. It's very difficult, it's very lonely. There's a lot of shit that you can't tell everybody. You gotta keep it to yourself while you're growing, while you're doing your thing. And what better way to, to surround yourself with positive messaging and people who are, in general, positive or looking to learn exactly why we're all here. So everything we do around our brand, everything you guys see, Hustle Inspires Hustle, our shirts, our messaging, our merchandise, everything spreads a positive message to remind ourselves because when we're building a business, we, there is no room for negative shit. You don't want to be around people that are giving you that negative vibe or telling you that you can't do something or that this doesn't work. You always have to find the solution. And the reason we built this and the reason we want to surround ourselves with people like you guys is because you guys are here how long have you been here since like 10 a.m.? Like it's a long ass day and you guys are still here willing to learn. That just goes to show that building communities like these does definitely help people out. So right away, mindset in the game. Everything is in your mind. If you wanna scale your business, it's not gonna work if your mind is not right. And there's many ways to look at that. Maybe you're around the wrong friends. Maybe your family aren't supporting you. Maybe you're in the wrong city that we were talking about. Sometimes you have to relocate. You have to put yourself in a situation where you feel comfortable with what you're doing. You believe in what you're doing and the people around you see that, see that vision as well, okay? So embrace your mistakes. Right away, have you guys seen graphics like these on social media? Yes. Raise your hand if you know somebody like that all the way over here on the left. That every time they fuck up, they feel like the world is trying, uh, trying to get them. Everything, everybody's out to get them. Nothing's going to work for them. They're always in that pit. That they can't get out of that pit. Or you see the person that sees the failure as a stepping stone in order to be able to get to the next place. And for a long time when I started my business, every time some bad shit happened, I was that negative person. I was like, man, like, shit doesn't work. I, I, I would blame it on other people. I would blame the situation. I wasn't in the right city. I wasn't in the right place. And what was really happening is that I wasn't in the right mindset. Can you guys agree? Yes. Okay, cool. So, some things that you definitely guys could apply into your business right now is writing things down. Why something isn't working. You guys are having a problem in your business, reverse engineer it. Write down every single problem you're having in your personal life and in your business, write it down on paper. Every single reason. Why didn't this work? This didn't work because of this. That didn't work because of that. And start breaking every single thing down so you could figure out what it is that you need to fix instead of continuing to make the same mistakes over and over and then wondering why things aren't working out, okay? Don't be afraid to ask for feedback. Don't be afraid to look stupid or ask the stupid questions. There's no stupid questions. The stupid person is the person that stays quiet and doesn't realize that they need to ask the right questions so they could grow. Seek advice from mentors. So we're here together, all of us, for a whole weekend here in LA. Ask all the questions that you need to ask. Don't be afraid to ask a speaker something. That, this is what we're here for. Okay, we're here to ask questions. We're here to be the people that we needed when we were younger or when we were starting out, right? Be prepared. Think ahead. You've made mistakes. Keep them top of mind. Reflect that if you have a team, talk about it with your team. Don't, don't be that leader. And everybody in here, you guys, everybody in here want to be a leader, right? Don't sweep your mistakes under the rug. Don't act like you don't make a mistake because everybody does. And if you're able to voice that and talk about that with the people around you, they're gonna be able to help you bring you up. When they catch you slipping, they're gonna be like, hey, remember when this happened last time or that happened? You need to be able to have that right support system that helps you out of a bad situation. And of course, make a checklist of red flags. You guys, you guys are all entrepreneurs, right? So raise your hand if you've ever tried to do business with somebody and they give you that really funny feeling of, oh, I don't really know if I should do this or maybe I need the money right now, but maybe I shouldn't be working with this person. Don't fucking do it. Don't do it because it's gonna drive you fucking crazy. It's gonna drive you insane to be working with somebody that's literally ruining your day. It doesn't matter how much money they're paying you. 22 years old, I was coming into the office one time a week and they were paying me $100,000 a year. $100,000 a year for five hours of my time once a week. But the work environment was so toxic and the things that I was just seeing, the communication, the way people treated each other. And obviously, you wanna make 100 grand. As a 22 years old, you're making 100 grand. I mean, most people would be like, fuck it, let me just stay here and deal with this shit. But if I would have stayed in that job, I wouldn't be speaking to all of you guys here today and we wouldn't have the beautiful opportunities that we're talking about. If I, if, if I would have just looked at the money, things wouldn't be the way they are right now. So that's why it's very important when you see those red flags, like one of the great things that I've learned from one of our mentors, Jeremy Haynes, um, is the perfect client traits, okay? You have to, when you're gonna work with somebody, you gotta make sure that they check off all the boxes for you. 
Because at the end of the time, at the end of the day, it's your time, your money, and your resources that you're putting into working with them. It's something that's reciprocal. So if you have to, if, if you're working with somebody that mistreats people, that talks bad to a waiter or waitress, uh, talks bad to their colleagues, or talks shit about people, or spends most of their day gossiping or saying negative shit, is that really what you want to bring into your business, into your daily life? That person is going to be influencing you and influencing that energy into your business. And yeah, you may need the money, or yeah, you may be behind on bills, or shit may be difficult. But just think about the life that you could have if you actually put yourself in the room with the people who are actually going to make you feel good about what you're doing, who are going to encourage you, who are going to tell you all the right things and maybe not tell you that you're doing everything perfect and, and, and you know, telling you the wrong things, but just actually saying, hey, look, you need to sit down. You need to really put everything on paper. You need to realize what you want to do. Who's around you? Like the people that wake you up and the people that talk to you real are the people that you need to keep around. Not the people that tell you like, oh, how do I look in this outfit? And you look like shit and they tell you, oh yeah, yeah, you look great. No, I'm the type of person and, my, and I, I encourage my team to do the same as when I'm fucking up or I said something dumb or there's something that's not working out, tell me, call me out on it because we're all a work in progress. We're all always learning and we all need to make sure that we keep each other accountable. Whether they're friends, whether they're peers, whether they're family, whether they're business partners, these are all important things to keep talk of, uh, top of mind. So red flags, make a checklist, perfect client traits. Do they understand you? Do they respect your time? Do they show up to the phone calls on time? Do they show up to the meetings on time? These, this, these are the right traits that you want to look for in people that you want to work with or work for. You can use it for both. Okay. So negative thoughts. See mistakes as an opportunity to improve. We're all going to mess up. You got you to gotta be proud of your mistakes. John, you have successful businesses, bro. All right? How many times have you fucked up, dude? And you're going to keep fucking up. But you are where you are today because of that. Right? Because now every time you run into a scenario where you may have run, where you might have dealt with when you were 25, 30 years old, that shit's not going to happen to you anymore because you already know how to maneuver it. You have the tool, all of the tools under your belt. You got all the cheat codes. You guys ever play video games like Grand Theft Auto where you had all the cheat codes? The more you mess up, you want to mess up because every time you mess up, now you're going to know what you need to do next time, right? So you're not doomed to repeat your mistakes. Remember that. No matter where you come from, no matter what family you come from, what neighborhood you come from, no matter what's happened to you or the people around you, it doesn't define your future. You could step out of that at any given point the second you set your mind right is when you're able to do that. So take a look around you. Who are the people who are in your circle? Is it the person that's about to run out of battery right here? The person that's always saying negative shit? The person that's always tired? The person that doesn't show up on time? Or the person that's always ready to go? Like, guys, look at Michelle right now. You guys see her? She's working two cameras right here. Look at that shit. Look at that. You guys see that, right? Now... Now, let me tell you another thing. Michelle started working with me about a year and a half ago, right? Okay. In that year and a half, since it's, it was last week, Michelle closed the contract with Iconic. Raise your hand if you guys know Iconic. Okay, our advertising agency now does designs for Iconic, the canvas prints. She closed that deal. A year and a half ago, Michelle was working at a restaurant, okay? And just because she's closing contracts or traveling the world and doing all these things doesn't mean that she gets lazy. Look at her. She's working two cameras right now, right? Because that's the type of people you need to surround yourself with. Not the people that are entitled, waiting for shit to happen. People that make shit happen. Because I'm the one that's speaking up here. I'm talking about the brand. I'm the founder of this. But it's not just me. It's the people that are around me. There's so many people in the room. You see them wearing Hustle Inspires Hustle. Or you see them rocking one of our brands. It's people that believe in me and I believe in them. And we help each other grow. I'm the face of the company, but I wouldn't be able to do any of this shit without the people that support me, without you guys staying here late listening to me. So this is the type of environment that we need to continue to be around. And yes, you may not be able to go to an event every single day, but all of these people are available online for webinars, masterminds, different communities that you guys could, could stay in touch with. Just make sure that you don't lose that fire and that momentum that you're going to have once you leave this event this weekend. Make sure you guys keep that going and follow up because everything in success is about the follow up, right? So let's talk about your audience because there's a lot of people that want to see how it is that they could grow their business. And we're not here just to give you motivational advice and tell you to surround yourself with the right people. But we're also here to tell you exactly what you need to do to make sure that your businesses or your services are selling. And to be able to understand that you have to be able to understand who the ideal client is, right? So you need to figure out what, what industry are you in. Let's, let's do a little test. Who wants to, I need a volunteer. I want to talk about somebody's business. Uh, Ali. All right, who is your ideal client? 
you do magic for people, right? You do certain events, you entertain people online, but what would be your bread and butter? Getting booked for, for big scale events where you could do a performance? Uh, no, the, bread, the bread and butter, the best thing would be like celebrities house parties. Like I just got uh, hired for this guy, Motif, he's like a producer. Yeah, he works, for, uh, he works with Mark Anthony. Yeah. yeah, I was yeah. hired for his birthday party, and uh -huh. that was like awesome. So I could do stuff like that at even bigger scales, like just walking around doing magic to people. That's, that's what I would love to do the most. Now, what's a problem that you usually see that a lot of these people are dealing with as to why maybe they don't hire somebody like you or why they're, they're not open to having an entertainer come to their event or their party? Because they don't know what it's going to be, and it's kind of like weird. It's not like super normal to have a a magician, right? Because maybe they think about the magicians back in the day with the fucking rabbit and the hat and all that. You're not doing that. So their problem is they're maybe misinformed about modern day magic. Maybe they don't have all the right information. So what is your solution? Your solution is to create top quality content that shows them who endorses you. Because I know for a fact you speak at Epic Talks, which is Jason Stone's event. You've come to our events, the Hustle Inspires Hustle event. You travel all around the United States. You have all of these content creators around you. What better way to establish authority than to show these potential clients what it is that you do already? What are you doing? Who's hiring you? Who's doing all of these things? Let, let's get another one going. Joe, I know you raise your hand, bro. Okay, what problems do your business, your current, um, your current clients have? Uh, they work with another marketing agency. So they got burned. Yeah, they got burned. They don't want to try it out again. Or they did it themselves and they believe that they can do it you know, themselves. They don't want to pay somebody else. Or you know, it's not in their market. Okay, so they're skeptical. Okay, so a lot of the people, and I deal with that a lot through my advertising agency, a lot of the people, what they, what they, what they deal with is that they're misinformed. They, they work with other growth agencies, they burn them, they didn't grow their page. Everything is about data, right? So the solution is to be able to actually listen. That's the most important thing in business. Stop trying to pitch, pitch, pitch. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? Clearly, they know that you're trying to sell them something, but take a moment to listen. Okay, there's a great book that I'm going to recommend to you guys at the end of this. Uh, one of the books is called Never Split the Difference. Okay, it's by an uh, FBI um, terrorist negotiation expert that he teaches you how to negotiate with people, how to hold a conversation. What you need to do is you need to s stop trying to talk so much and listen. Because especially if you work in the field of marketing or in a service industry, that person has a problem. And you're not going to solve their problem by telling them what you're going to do before you know what their problem is or what their real problems are. So what you need to do is you need to listen. So here, I, I put up a few examples for you guys. This is mainly for courses and, and masterminds and different things that we see in the industry, all these gurus trying to sell you shit. So a lot of the problems you see is so many courses, so many programs telling people they're gonna get them to zero to 100K in, in 90 days. Um, it's from disqualified instructors, people that nobody know, just these random people that decided to throw ads up. They don't have any actionable, actionable material, no standard operating procedures, no spreadsheets that you could use, no actual system, right? What are solutions? Keep it real. Give them a sneak peek of the course or the material that you're going to be able to give them. Show them your track record, what people have trusted you, what people would vouch for you. Create a process for them that it could follow, a proprietary process. So how many of you guys, raise your hand if you have bought into a course, a marketing course, a course, almost everyone, right? Did those courses have a system that you're able to use now like standard operating procedures, uh, spreadsheets, um, things like that. Do you guys use that? You guys use spreadsheets, you guys use Google Docs, you guys use all of these materials. So in our current day and, and all of these courses that you see going around, there's so many people teaching different, different things, but they just kind of tell you over the top what to do. What really works for people nowadays is to show them the process. One great person for you guys to look into, look into Ryan Stewart, he's a digital marketing specialist. He shows you exactly what's the best way to be able to sell a service and it's by what we were talking about before, value up front. And you'll hear it as a buzzword, value, 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 value. But in a world that is so saturated with ads and with gurus and with people telling you that they could solve your problems, what better way to get your atten their attention than by giving them a bunch of free shit up front. As an entrepreneur, you're probably gonna do a bunch of free work. We've all done it, right? Free work to get exposure, to get known, to get understood, okay? You need to prime your audiences. You need to get them to understand who you are, what you do, why they need to trust you, you need to establish authority. And I'm gonna tell you exactly how I'm doing it right now as I'm speaking in front of you guys. There's about like five cameras filming me right now. I'm standing right in front of you guys and you guys are all listening to me. When I use this video later on on social media, it's gonna establish authority because I'm speaking, you guys are gonna to wanna to listen to me, right? And when people see that, they're gonna be like, okay, so this guy's speaking in front of all these people, he must be saying something important or something that has enough value. 
This is something that you guys could be applying to your businesses as we speak. Not necessarily speaking in front of a bunch of people and filming it, but documenting your process, showing you at work, showing people vouching for you in order for them to be able to trust you with their money and most importantly, their business. So these are usually people that you guys are gonna run into. These are what I like to call and what most marketers like to call audience personas. So before you start selling any type of service or product, you need to understand who would buy the product. You don't wanna go and start a product and say, okay, I'm gonna start this t-shirt line and it's gonna be for entrepreneurs. I'll give you guys a perfect example. Hustle inspires hustle. Our main target audience that we would like to believe for our merchandise is people like you guys, right? People who are digital marketers, entrepreneurs, people that wanna be in this space. But it just so happens that once we start reading the data and all of the hashtags and the thousands of people around the world that are hashtagging us and visiting our website, that it's mostly people in the fitness community. So why in my right mind would I continue to try and kick down these shirts down somebody's throat when they may not be as interested as the person who's already interested in doing it, like the people that are using our hashtag saying hustle inspires hustle, fitness, 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 fitness. Same, same thing with this. You build audience personas. Here we have skeptical Steven. He's been burned. He's tired of shitty courses. He's tired of this shit. You have to talk to him a certain way. You have to provide value to this guy a certain way in order for him to be able to convert. Maybe Bern Bryan, who has a specific, um, who has a very similar story, but he's looking for other things. Or maybe you have Penny. She's very productive, right? And Penny doesn't want to do everything herself. She wants a process that's already laid out for her so she could follow the steps and just get it done right away, right? This is the type of girl that would want the spreadsheets, the, the, the Google Docs, all the do-it-yourself shit. And these are the guys that are actually looking for the real modern day digital marketing tactics. So these are different people that you could potentially be targeting, but who is your audience? Who is the ideal person that you could be hitting? Now, let's say that this is a majority of your business. Steven and Brian are 60% of your business. You can't forget about Penny. You gotta remember that you gotta be able to, uh, to cater to people in whichever way possible, giving them all the value so there is no stone left unturned when they're gonna go make that decision about hiring you or purchasing your product. So another thing is confusing people, okay? As an entrepreneur, as a serial entrepreneur, I like to invest into other shit. I like to start businesses. I, it's, it's, this fuck, it's like a fucking disease. Like you wanna keep going and going and going, winning and winning and this and that. And if you're just starting out and your main business is not making a lot of money, you have no business doing something else. You need to make sure that business thrives because what are you gonna do starting another business when your main business doesn't work or confusing the shit out of people? Like I, I do real estate, but I also have like three drop shipping stores. So, so how am I supposed to see you? Like, right? If I'm a marketer, I'm a digital marketer here, and what I do is I build marketing campaigns for companies around the world, Red Bull, Adidas, hgreg.com, Iconic, Prop Movie Money, you name them, I've done marketing campaigns for them or in, been involved in some way or form, right? But I wouldn't be able to get to those people if I was like, oh yeah, I do marketing sometimes, but like I have a drop shipping store and then sometimes like I like to sell merchandise. I'm already confusing them. They don't even know what to hire me for. And I hear this a lot at events and, and, and it's not to try people or rip on people, but it's me wanting to show you guys that you don't want to confuse people. Don't tell them you do a million things. We're a clothing brand, but we're also a marketing agency, but we also do Forex. You guys hear that all the time? Oh, we do Forex and this and that. Like, dude, be good at one thing. Be the best person at that one thing so there is no doubt that people are going to want to work with you. I want to be the best marketer on the face of the planet. I want when people sit down in a big boardroom and say, we need one of the best marketers in the world. I want them to think Gary Vaynerchuk, myself, or whoever else is, is coming up. And I'm only going to do that to continuing to, to learn, applying these methods, not confusing people. You don't want to confuse your audience. People get confused very easily, especially with everything going on in social media. What do you do for a living, bro? Okay, and what do you guys do specifically? We are the middleman between hotels and service providers. Are you doing another business right now? Yes. What are you trying to do? Uh, it's, I do web design on the side as well. I'm, and what kind of market are you trying to target? Um, the roofing industry. The roofing industry? Yeah. Okay, which kind of goes with the hospitality, construction, yeah. all type, type of stuff like that. Okay, now, one thing that you need to do when you come to events like this is you're trying to push your business. Yes, you work for the other business right now, but right now what you're trying to do is work with these roofing companies, right? Yeah. There's so many trade shows for roofing. You come to events like this and you learn all the marketing strategies and then you go to the roofing trade shows and talk to these guys because a lot of the guys that are around them have no idea how to use digital marketing strategies. They don't know that web design is important. They don't know that SEO is important for roofing. 
right? Because most people, when they need a, their roof fixed, modern day, they go on Google, right? It's a very competitive landscape. Like you have so many other ways of scaling that specific business from not just web design to Google ads to SEO to so many other things, but you need to make sure that you niche down on just that. People understand that you're the guy that works with roofers or you're the guy that does that specifically. You're the magician. That's what you do. Don't confuse people because what I did when I started making some good money with my advertising agency is I started investing into a bunch of things. So when people would ask me what I did, I would tell them, oh, I have an advertising agency, uh, but I have a clothing company. Oh yeah, and by the way, I just started an exotic car rental company in Miami so you guys could rent cars. I, I, did, I started doing all these things as I was making all this money. And then it got to a point where people didn't even know what, what, I, uh, what does Alex do? Uh, I don't know, he's post a bunch of cool shit on Instagram. And then I started thinking to myself, that's not how I wanna be seen. I don't wanna be seen like that. I wanna be seen for my, tra for my trade, for my craft, in order for people to respect that and to make it easier for people to make on this, a decision on whether they wanna hire me or not. So stop confusing people, stop doing a bunch of things. Be aware of shiny object syndrome. We all deal with it, you guys just gotta suppress it. Okay, another great thing you guys need to look at is a SWOT analysis on yourself or your business. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. What are things your company does well? What internal resources do you have like staff that could do great work? What tangible assets do your business have? What weaknesses do you have? Don't ignore your weaknesses. People are afraid to talk about their weaknesses, but it's very important to be able to overcome them. What, what are things your company lacks in? What limitations do you have? Do you have an unclear, unique selling proposition. So when you guys are talking about your business or evaluating your business, you gotta break down what it is that the business does and be extremely clear when talking about it so it could, in a sense, be a quick elevator pitch on what you do. Immediately, people understand what you do for a living, okay? Opportunities. Are there any underserved markets for specific products you could be targeting? Is there an emerging need for your product or service on a specific platform like Google, Facebook, right? Because everybody's concentrating on Instagram and Facebook and priming people and putting them through a process where they see all your videos and then you hit them with a conversion ad, right? Wouldn't you agree that if you're trying to sell a product on social media, you have to convince the person by showing them a bunch of shit first so then they could buy, so they could click that button? What a lot of people don't realize is that Google is a great tool because Google has search intent. People on Google are already searching for something. Best roofers in Los Angeles, best magicians in Los Angeles or Miami. They already want it. They already want to pay for it. They're looking for it. You don't have to convince them. So one of the things that you need to worry about on social media is being omnipresent, meaning you need to be on every single platform in one way or another. One thing that's overlooked greatly is Google, right? Glitter Twins. Do you know how many people must be looking for glitter shit on Google? Guys, download the tool called Uber Suggest. Uh, you don't even have to download it. It belongs to Neil Patel, one of the guests on the podcast. It's called Uber Suggest. I just told you guys, do a SWOT analysis, check out the competition, but don't be obsessed with the competition. Don't be obsessed with what other people are doing and always trying to follow up behind them or one-up them. Because the best thing in business is originality. People love originality. You don't want to be like everybody else. You want to know what everybody else is doing. Okay, we are very original in the content that we create, all the things that we drop, but you better be damn sure that we have our eyes on everybody. Every single person we know what, we're, what they're doing, why they're not doing it, why are they not posting like that anymore, who are they associating themselves with? Very, very important. So, business tools and books, okay? So we talked about being in the right mindset, being away from negative people, finding your way towards positive people from a motivational perspective. We broke down things that you need to look out for in your business, red flags, what type of analysis you need to do for your business. And now let's talk about a few business tools and books that you guys could start using right now and implement to your business that could definitely help you out. So we were talking about search, search. First of all, Google, obviously you guys know is an amazing tool. Quora, great tool, Reddit, great tool. So Quora and Reddit, people go on Quora and Reddit and ask questions and people answer them for them. So if people are asking a lot of questions within a specific industry, it must mean that there's an interest for it and there's a gap in the market that you might be able to fill. For, for doing something like that, you could use tools like SEMrush, they have, they have freemium uh, programs that you might, not, you might not need to pay if you don't need to, but SEMrush, Ubersuggest, Keywords Everywhere, you download all of these or start using all of these and it'll give you all the data from everybody on the internet that's looking for something in your specific industry right now. So you know what to serve people. Make sure you guys look at these tools. Other great tools for business and mind, Headspace. 
some meditation going. Sometimes our mind goes too crazy. Sometimes we get frustrated and we try to work and work and work through the frustration when maybe a five to 10 minute break might really help you out, getting into a meditative state or maybe listening to an audio book so you could get motivated about something else. Um, another great tool you could use for business and bookings, if you're a content creator, if you're a realtor, if you're a graphic designer, if you're a digital marketer, it'll keep track of all your clients, it'll keep track of all your projects, every single thing you do, all your billing. HoneyBook is a great tool. And one of the top tools this year that I started using and they recently revamped is Funnelytics. The beautiful thing about Funnelytics is that it pretty much, um, it helps all the visual learners. So as you guys may know, people learn in several different ways, visually, auditory, or kinesthetic by watching, by looking, kinesthetic, by doing, by touching, or by hearing if they're auditory. Funnelytics helps digital marketers from a visual perspective. It allows you to connect Funnelytics to your website, to your social media, to Google, to every single platform that drives traffic either to your website or outside of your website, and it connects every single thing and shows you visually like on a map, like on a chart. They have a free version, and it's very, very easy to use. They have, they have all the videos and tools that you guys could use to connect it to your current website or your current social media, and it shows you what channels are currently selling and what channels are not. The fact that it connects to your website, it also shows you conversions on your website. So it'll tell you, okay, from Google, 100 people came from organic search, and out of those 100 people, 10 people went on this landing page. Out of those 10 people, two people clicked and converted. And you see the whole process visually, and it's all interconnected in a web with Facebook, Instagram, uh, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, whatever it is that you're working on connects to your website. So this is a, a tool that a lot of people sleep on, and you guys should definitely use. Oh yeah, if you guys want to uh, get HoneyBook, want to use it, use code Alex for 50% off. So. Don't forget about that one. <laughs> um, all right, cool. Guys, some of you guys went to the last NetCon event, so you guys saw some of these books. We went ahead and added some new stuff. Some books that you guys should definitely have top of mind. Um, never split the difference. I talked to you guys about that, about the FBI negotiator. This will definitely help out in business. I've been, I'm probably halfway through it and the rest of the team read it already. Um, I haven't finished it, but the, the half of it that I read already, I could already tell you guys that you guys should, should definitely look into it. If you're not a big reader, Get an audio book. If you don't have a lot of time, play that shit at 1.25 speed or 1.5. Consume it quick, take your notes, and make sure you apply everything. Profit First will definitely help you out with banking. So Profit First pretty much tells you how to set up your bank accounts in order for everything to flow correctly. Because most people run their business from one bank account. Definitely something you shouldn't be doing. You want to take care of your taxes, you want to take care of your profit, you want to take care of every single aspect of your business and you do it from a different account. That'll help you do it as well. The one thing will help you figure out, literally, the one thing that you need to do in your business for it to succeed. Because a lot of the times we drown ourselves in checklists and to-do lists and all these things and we're so busy all day, but at the end of the day, sometimes all we need to do is just stop, slow down, take a step back and try to find the one thing that is the most important thing for us to do in order for us to scale our business or move to the next step. The surrender experiment is also another great one. It'll definitely help you be in the right mindset for business, accept change, accept adversity, accept failure, okay? Uh, it's all good, bro. So, you guys wanna connect with us, you guys want the slides, you guys want any other further information, we have a ton of free value on hustleinspireshustle.com, digital marketing tactics, meditation, apps that you could use to grow your business, your Shopify store, anything that has to do with the digital marketing space, we have the tools and they're all free. I'm not here to sell you guys anything. So make sure you guys tune in to the podcast if you guys wanna hear from a lot of these cool guys. Uh, Hustle Inspires Hustle on all major platforms. Uh, send us an email or follow us on Instagram. Let us know that you guys want all of the content and Michelle is gonna go ahead and put it in the pipeline and send you guys every single thing you could possibly need. We have, pre we have a ton of presentations like these that give you tools, books, uh, tips, tricks, spreadsheets, Google Docs, standard operating procedures that you could use and tweak for your business so you guys could start getting everything rocking and rolling. So you guys make sure to connect with us. Um, let's, let's do some Q&A. Anybody have any questions? Questions, questions? Nope. Um, so when you were first starting out, you said you had like a bunch of different businesses. Yeah. What did you do? Did you just cut them out or? Um, so when I started my agency, it was just me. It was just like me knocking on doors. It was just myself. I got a little office and then I started hitting people up on Instagram. That's when Instagram was really like, was really taking off. And I started building up a big client base locally, working with local clients. And I built a name for myself because I did good work and I always try to go above and beyond. And before I knew it, I was doing work with Adidas and Nike and all these brands. Um, 
just from connections, building relationships. Brett was talking about that. Relationships are great. Relationships are going to bring you most of your business. What I did is I scaled my agency to 17 employees. I was 22 years old. We were running it out of two offices. And I, I was making really good money. Uh, and like any other 22-year-old with, with good money, I tried to spend it all in whichever way I could so I could feel great about myself and so I could think that other people would see me in a bigger light or make, make myself feel important. It was just naive. I didn't understand what I was really doing. I was making all this money and I just wanted to show off and do all these things. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to be the baddest motherfucker in the room, every room I walked in. So I wanted to have the most amount of offices. I wanted to have the most employees. I wanted to have the most companies. I wanted to have the most investments. I wanted to be the, the baddest motherfucker. Like I said, for, for what reason? I don't know. Maybe I had something to prove or I, I didn't, I was looking, wasn't looking at life the right way. So I was making a lot of money and what I did is I started letting people manage certain areas of my business and I started stepping back to invest into others and then others and others and others and what ended up happening is I started taking attention away from my main business which was making me my money and made me who I was to grow other companies so while it was like taking food out of one kid's mouth to get to the other kid right so like that's what I was really doing. I was taking resources and time away from one business to then grow another, to then grow another, another, another. And the shiny object syndrome, I kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper until before I knew it, I had all these things going on. I had all these responsibilities. I had all these people that were counting on me. And yes, I had multiple businesses and they were running and they were self-sufficient, but I was going insane. So that had to be in and out of the office, checking on people, investing, doing all these things. And it drove me insane. So what I did, I decided to do is I started to narrow my focus and I said, okay, No more offices. I'm going to stop hiring people because I was just paying people for no reason. I was just paying people just to have an office full of people so I could bring people and show them I had a bunch of people. Literally, that's what I was doing. So I needed to get myself out of that mindset of I want to do things so I could impress other people or so I could look a certain way. And I need to do things that are going to be right for me. Right. Because the same work I was doing with 17 people before I'm doing with nine people now. Right. So what was the what was my need to have another like eight people? just to have them sitting there or, or feel like I had a big company. You don't need to have a bunch of employees. You could be just yourself and make a bunch of money, make millions of dollars just by yourself. You could be a great consultant. You could do so many other things, right? One or two other people, but it's the right people. It's that quality of people that are really gonna be able to help you out. Like I was using Michelle as a great example. Daniel is a great example. Carlos is a great example. Everybody that, that is part of our community, Brian Breach, everybody's helping each other out. But you don't, the people I was surrounding myself at that time, kept encouraging me to do more. Yeah, 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 invest here. Hey, Alex, check this out. You should buy into this clothing. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, let me do everything. So I wasn't around the right people because they, they saw what was going on. I was literally going mentally insane, spending all of my money that I worked so hard to work on just because they wanted to have fun or travel or do this or do that. Until I started surrounding myself with the people I have now, they're like, Alex, don't do that. Hey, maybe that's not a good idea the right people around me, but the shiny object syndrome was difficult. It was difficult to overcome. It's not something that, there's not something that happens overnight. You really gotta be able to take full control of your mind because that's the biggest obstacle you're gonna have. Um, So I was just wondering like, what's like your morning routine? Like, do you wake up early? Like, what do you do when you- Yeah, so when I don't have like a crazy launch or we're we're about to launch like a big campaign for a client, I wake up at six in the morning I don't touch my phone till 9 a.m. So I give, I use the first three hours of the day to myself uh, because the last thing we see when we go to sleep is our cell phone. The first thing we see is when we wake up is our cell phone. You're consumed by this digital world and, and writing back to people and sharing the stories and who saw my story and how many people looked at my story and they, they write back on the comment that this have, it's, it, it's too much. Like you need to have time for yourself. People don't know how to have time to themselves anymore and, and think about themselves and, and evaluate your life and project and what you want to do. And I believe the morning is a very great time to do that. It's how you start off your day. So I don't touch my phone for the first three hours of the day. During those three hours, I read, I write, I go over notes. Um, I prepare what I'm going to talk about with my team the rest of the day. I meditate. I walk my dog. I make myself breakfast. Because before I was the type of dude that I used to just run out of the house. I wouldn't eat fucking crazy, didn't do my hair, like, gotta get to the office, like, it was just this crazy ass, and on Instagram, on the way to the office, like, swiping and seeing who, like, it was just, I was just in this, the rap, like, you're not in the nine to five when you're doing this whole shit, but you're in that rat, social media rat race, and when you step away from it, you realize that it's not everything, it's a great tool to be able to connect and push things, but if you spend most of your day on these platforms, like, what are you really doing unless you really need to be on the platforms, 
right? Like Anthony, Anthony needs to be on the platform. He grows Instagram pages. He's not there like sitting there on his ass wasting, like looking at people's feeds all day. He doesn't give a fuck about what people are posting. He gives a fuck about what he needs to post to be successful. For me, I like to step away from social media as much as I can, but to an extent I have to be on there because of my podcast, because of the, the influence that I carry in certain areas. I need to maintain that in order for the businesses to thrive. But my morning routine consists of taking care of myself, taking care of my dog, um, read the things that I like, read world news. I think it's very important to be cultured and understand what's going on around the world so you could have conversations with meaningful people and powerful people. People that do great business, people that do a lot of business, know what's going on with banks around the world, know what's going on with the stock market, know what's going on certain things that are going on. You need to be aware of what's going on so you can have these meaningful conversations with people and you're not repeating the same shit over and over again. Because when you don't, I spend three hours of my day learning. No matter what, learning, of course, reading, talking to somebody, having a mentorship call. I spent three hours out of my day learning something. Otherwise, I'm regurgitating the same shit I know every day over and over and over and over and over because I'm not learning anything. And a lot of people consume themselves with their business and all day working, 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 team no sleep, team no sleep, wake up, go back to sleep, wake up and working, but they're not learning anything. So they might be making so many mistakes over and over that they wonder why they're not overcoming them and it's because they're not taking the time to learn. Like Judge Graham, Ju Judge Graham gave all of you guys books. I don't wanna see any of these fucking books on the floor or leaving them behind. He took the time to write that and those are years of his experience that he's giving to you guys for free so you guys could learn. Books are so great. That's why I put books on my presentation. A lot of people don't, but they're very, very important. It's not nerdy. It's not stupid. It's literally the cheat codes of life. It's literally people putting their entire life journey into a book for you so you can make sure you don't make those mistakes or you, you, you guys have the right tools in order to be successful. Okay. Done? Last one. Follow up question of what she said. When is it too much? You're spending too much time on Instagram. We're not talking about wasting time like the pictures. Are. We're talking about for your business. So it's, it's never enough, I guess, right? No, but you could, have a, you could have a nice pipeline. You could have a nice process. And you got to realize that most people are active during certain times. So a lot of the times that we're scrolling is because we want to. And we like to tell ourselves, oh, for the business or, oh, you know, I'm good. But you don't really need to be on there that much. Or you, you, you need to re be reaching out to the right people. You're reaching out to too many people. Make sure it's the right person. Make sure, like a lot of people reach out on social media and they want to work with you or collab or hey, I want to, uh, people hit me up every day. Hey, I want to collab. What the fuck do you want to collab about? <laughs> no, for real. Like what do you, like, what am I supposed to answer to that? Like have it ready. When I reach out to somebody, it's like, hey, I got this, 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 and that. I want to do this. This is how it's going to help you. This is how it's going to help me. I have the whole thing ready to go. All you got to do is say yes. Like Done. Like, what, what do you mean? Like Simon, when, he, when we did this collab. Exactly. Remember when we talked yeah. about doing this collab? Yeah. Yeah. Simon asked me to meet him somewhere in New York, right, with Thomas. And he sat down with me. He said, look, I want to do this, 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 and that. And I, we usually say no to so many people because we have so much shit going on. But Simon's such a great dude. He puts on such great events. And he was so prepared that there was really no reason for us to be like, oh, that doesn't work for us. And just like manifesting, we literally like went and took it from my idea to the process to reality. And like we have all those banners. We have shirts, hoodies for everybody tomorrow, guys. <laughs> yeah, he had it prepared already. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. That's the most important part. Don't hit up a million people. Hit up 10 of the right people with the right pitch. And don't just reach out to people to be in their network because people know when you just want to be around for no reason. They, they smell that. We smell it. We understand how the game works. We've been there. We've been those guys. So make sure that when you reach out, you reach out for the right reasons. Cool? Thank you, guys. Thank you for listening. All righty.